Woo -woo. What's going on, guys? Lucas here with Love Pups Gaming, and I just want to say thank you so much for 25,000 subscribers. You guys are absolutely insane. Guys, it's been nonstop climbing, and I have had like no time to prepare for this 25,000 special. And yeah, I thought the best thing that I could possibly do for a special was some kind of map making special because i get a lot of people asking how you make maps in minecraft but also do something for the fans and if that doesn't sound like something that you guys are super into don't worry because on sunday may 30th around 1 maybe 2 p.m eastern time we are going to be doing a live stream once again with our fans maybe lucky block bed wars if that server becomes up and running or we'll do some more high pixel, maybe some survival let's play, different things like that with you guys to celebrate 25,000 subscribers. I think it's going to be absolutely amazing, so definitely stick around for that too. So we're going to start off this special with just some server updates. Guys, if you didn't know already, we have a server for all of you to join and you can come play with me on the server or you can come play with your friends and we've got a custom shop up here we've got custom hats on the server i don't i don't have any right now but i'm gonna go show you them right now we've got hats like this new hat from the common hats we've got rare hats like this vr helmet face mask it's beautiful we've got legendary pikachu hats this that is a Krizik special. He requested that one. That is his hat. Then we've got the Epic hats. This one's like a nice headphones. There are some like Love Cubs gaming headphones as well. And then we've got the Uncommon hats, as you can clearly see with that name there. Like the Flying Pig hat. Absolutely beautiful. But I want to give back to the fans. So I want to create a mini game. And that mini game is going to be on the server. But the winner of the minigame is going to get the 25,000 subscriber hat. No, there's not just one. Basically, it's a minigame that anybody can play. And yeah, anybody can get this beautiful hat. All right, so if I right click on this, look at that, 25,000. I know it's very, very specific. But of course, I wanted to give you guys something if you actually completed the minigame. So the first things first is I need to create a room and the best way to create a room, taking our wooden ax here, I'm gonna take this position, we're gonna come right out this way. And now yes, I am using world edit, a lot of my maps use world edit. But we're gonna come up to here and we're gonna build a wall. So I'm just gonna do slash slash position two, that sets my second position and I'm gonna fill this wall in with like, kind of like sky tones, but I just don't want it to be solid blue like I did for a lot of my earlier maps but I have been trying to get better at that. But what we're gonna do slash slash set, 10% packed ice, 25% light blue concrete, maybe another 25% of blue concrete, uh, if, I spell it, if I spell it properly. And then we'll do 15% of blue wool, and then 15% of light blue wool. And then finally, to finish that up, let's do a 10% of maybe sea lantern to give us like a nice glow. And if I hit enter, what you should see happen is this nice, nice wall of all different scattered blocks just gives it a bit more detail. And I can just keep that command saved in my inventory, not my inventory, my backspace there. Grab that corner. Come back down here and let's make another wall. So we're gonna take this and let's go to, I want this to be a decent size, let's go here. All right, that's perfect. So back up to the top. And we'll do all four walls. And once those are in place, we'll start working on the actual map. Now that the walls are in place, next thing I wanna do is set a biome. My favorite biome is Probably the mushroom biome because A, it controls bad mobs from spawning. I am going to make sure that no mobs can spawn. But, you know, just for other maps, if you are working on maps where you have mobs spawning, then you can control it very specifically with the type of biome. But I'm going to do slash slash set biome. And then I want to do mushroom fields. And now to actually 
see the change, we need to relog. Doesn't that grass just look so much better? There is so much more saturation in the grass, and it's just something like so simple. I mean, look at the difference. You can just see the difference in the grass, and that makes a big difference in making the map look a little bit better. Looks like I need to kind of extend it a bit more because we do have a little bit of bleed through here. But yeah, so now I want to work on making the actual builds for the map. Now, the style of map I'm thinking is like one room in a simulator. There's not going to be pets. There's not going to be anything drastic like that. But basically, I want you guys to join it. And then it, you'll have X amount of minutes to collect up a certain amount of money. And if you collect that money, then you win. If you don't, then you lose. So we need to work on a scoreboard system and we need to work on an item spawning system. So what I think will look really good in this area is to have like mountains coming up the side on the outside, have like a little wooded area in here. I can have like a little campfire, a little tent area set up, and I can have like a water stream come through here. And hopefully, hopefully I can hook it up to like a nice decent sized lake in the middle here to bring it all together. So the first thing I want to do is slash mask air. That's going to make sure the only blocks I affect are air blocks. Now I'm going to do slash brush spear dirt and let's set this to six just so I have a decent size to work with. I'm going to place this and we're going to start building up our mountains around the outside here. Once I've got the basic shape in place, what I want to do is do the same kind of thing but with a smaller brush. So you can kind of get in there with the details and try to clean up a lot of the big round looking areas. Like you want to try to get right into the crevices. You want to stop them from kind of like indenting inwards so that we can keep, create a nice slope upwards. So when we smooth it out, it all connects together nicely. So I'll show that too. So if I wanted to smooth out this wall now, slash brush, I want to do a smooth brush. And what we're going to do is maybe, I don't know, four by four. So I'll start bringing this up. And what you want to do is just bring that pile all the way up. Now you want to be careful. I'm going to mask grass and I'm going to mask dirt just so I don't affect this wall too much. And there we go. And that's what I'm going to do to the whole border around the entire outside. So let's get this outside wall or outside mountain all built up. All right, and just like that, it is decently shaped, okay? It's not perfect. No, there's definitely some areas here that could be brought up still and then smoothed out. But the thing is, I am going to fill, well, I mean, let's just do it. So slash game rule, random tick speed, Let's do, actually, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. We've got all grass all around here now. Let's set that back to three. And what I wanna do is put like a nice forest around the outside here. So let me replace all of the bedrock with dirt, just so I don't have to look at it. We'll go over here. We got dirt on the bedrock. Beautiful, beautiful, nice. There we go. Now, here's the fun part. This is one of my favorite things. It's one of the easiest ways to add a lot of detail, but it is really, really fast. So you do slash brush, forest, spear, and now you pick your kind of forest, right? So actually, hold on. You need to have your brush radius, your density, actually I can't do six. You can do your density and then your bush type. So let's do random. Random is awesome because you get a little bit of everything. Oh, yes, okay. So I don't know if anybody else truly likes this style, but it, I just find it, it's a very quick and dirty way to get maps to look good. And you know, it kind of hides all the little imperfections. You can still see that there's a mountain there. 
or at least a hill anyways probably not so much of a mountain and you've got all the detail with all the different kinds of trees so it's just a little thing that I like to do it really speeds up the detail work in the map and there we go I mean already our map is looking pretty good yeah there's gonna be some imperfections like if you go looking in here there's probably holes and stuff like that but the maps aren't meant to be explored per se they're meant to be played through so let's work on the next step so I want to work on like a forest now I don't want to necessarily have a random tree forest right so let's do the same thing but maybe some dark oak okay I can get on board with that right because you'll be playing down at foot level here so when you're actually walking underneath these trees yeah that's gonna add a cool, cool little bit of detail so if I bring this dark oak forest just kind of out to there and now I want to make sure there's room for a river so you know what, let's do the river right now so we're gonna do slash brush spear water and we're going to mask dirt and grass so let me do that here so let's do we've got size 2 I, I think I did that right no it's grass block in 1.15 now oh beautiful so we're just bring our little river all the way through here and hopefully I can bring this up the mountain oh what is you your puzzle right there we go now what I want to do is try to bring it up the mountain but I'm gonna leave that for like my own manual labor right we're gonna do buckets we'll do buckets flowing down here let's focus on this area here so we'll bring the river all the way through into like a lake here so let's make this nice and big you know I, I think that's a decent size so now we can actually focus on getting our dark oak forest filled in around it so let me do that it might be getting a little too dense actually so let's undo some of that I want this side to be a little less populated with trees so we're gonna do maybe a density of two all right that's a much much better okay all right I think one right there in the middle yeah there we go so now what do we do with this lake so I'm thinking about having like a little raft out here and they could have like I don't know lily pads maybe lily pads that might be a nice little detail that will you know set the map up have another area for them to explore yeah I think that's perfect let's do it And now that the raft is built, I mean, sort of a raft, right? I took inspiration from Grian from the Hermitcraft server where he actually has the trap doors and the fireplaces on top. I really do like the looks of it. It's, it's, it's not perfect, that's for sure. I thought having it kind of not perfect would be better. But yeah, actually, you know what? I kind of like that now. I do like that. Okay. Uh, what I want this raft to be is like a little bit of a loop area. So random times... There will be, oh, I need to have a thing there. This chest will fill with maybe a stack of the items that you're running around this area trying to collect. And I will have that figured out based on an armor stand selection. So I have an idea for random armor stand selectors and basically every 30, maybe 40 seconds or something, it will populate that chest. So what we need to do now is a little bit more decoration. I want to have like a little campfire here in the woods. I'm going to need to have some oak logs or maybe some spruce like this. And then we'll have stuff like this. And But this is where I want to have the guy who collects the item that you're trying to run around the map. 
and gives you actual money for it or something else. I haven't quite decided what we're going to do with that. Okay, so I've kind of got this area decorated now. Very simple. I just added a little bit of pod soil. Tried to create a tent here. Now, guys, one of the biggest things that's a problem right now is A, I'm on Minecraft 1.15.2. Most of my maps are Minecraft 1.12.2. That is definitely my strong point in my map making. That's where I know the most commands. That's where I know how to make a lot of stuff work. It is very, very different for the most part in 1.15.2, but we're trying here. But the other thing is mods. This is 100% vanilla Minecraft, and I don't have like nice angle blocks to make things look a bit better. So I just have to work with what I have. I mean, I could use nether, uh, what's it called? Stairs. I could use like the red netherrack stairs, but it just it just doesn't feel right. It really doesn't. I mean, if I went up right here, no, nothing, nothing looks right. So we're gonna go with a very basic shape, very basic look, and let's get ourselves an NPC in here. So normally I would use custom NPCs. We don't have that. We've got citizens on this server. So I'm going to have a citizen stand right here because I'm not going to be able to make him sit. So we're going to do NPC create. What do we want to call this citizen? Let's call him Krizzy. All right, we're going to call him Krizzy. And oh, you're, you're looking fantastic, my dude. We're going to do slash NPC select slash NPC skin. And we're going to call, we're going to actually give this guy a skin. Like that. Nice. You're going to buy or sell your items back to Krizik. So, buddy, I need you to look at me. Awesome. Now, I really wish I could get him to sit down. I can't. It's very tedious. I can make him ride in a minecart and do a lot of fancy stuff there. But we're just going to have him stand for the purpose of this map. So, you've got to bring back items to Krizik. What items are you going to bring back? Well, we just hit 25,000 subscribers, right? So I'm thinking what we need to do is collect 25,000 subscribers. So I'm gonna make like an actual item of like a person, okay? It's just gonna be like a regular Steve skin, but it's gonna be spawning all over the map. And you have to go around, collect the Steve, and bring them back to Krizik. And Krizik will collect the subscribers and put it onto your scoreboard that will appear somewhere. I'm not sure where yet. It will appear though. Let's create ourselves an item that looks like a player. Let's do this. All right guys, so I use a program called Blockbench for the 3D models in my map. We're gonna make one of the simplest models you could possibly make because it's built right into the program. So first thing we're gonna do is filter. We're going to generate a player statue. We can generate the second layer. I don't think this Steve skin has a second layer, but we'll do it. So this is what our model looks like. Now we don't really have to do anything else. All I need to do is open up the resource pack that I have right now for the server. And this is where I have my Steve texture. I'm gonna bring the Steve texture into Blockbench with me. Now I'm gonna make sure I have all these sides collected. We're gonna start on North and we're gonna click. We're gonna go to South, we click West, and we just do this for all the sides and our texture, our model is technically already done. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to delete those second layers and we're going to rotate this. So I need a pivot tool up a little bit higher. So we're rotating about this point. When I rotate it, come on, the legs are going to come up and I can go left and right. So we're going to go left a little bit. We're gonna go right a little bit and I wanna bring the arms up as well. So we can get rid of the second skins there and the pivot point is way down low. So let's get these up here. Because I'm doing both of them about this point, I can probably just leave it right there and I'll rotate both of them upwards just like that. Perfect, now it looks like he's just sitting there enjoying his day, holding his hands on his legs. Fantastic, all right, I'm gonna bring this down we're gonna move it just so it's a little bit more centered on the building area. Now we're gonna to go to our displays. Now this is what everything looks like when you're actually holding the item or when, we, when we're doing different things with the item. So I'm gonna default everything back. This is what it would normally look like. I'm gonna lower that or make it a lot smaller. We're gonna rotate them up a tiny bit 
and then pull them out just a tad bit. Now I'm going to copy that and apply it to the third person as well. So it looks good in both hands. Now we're going to go to the right, how it looks when you're holding him. This is what default would be. So I'm going to adjust these. Now there is one thing you could do. Go to display, apply preset, default item. But you can't always guarantee that it's going to look how you want it to look. So I'm going to rotate it so you can see the head. And then we're just going to drag it and bring it there. Now I'm going to make it a tiny bit smaller and that should be good to go. We'll do the exact same thing for the left hand and now for the head. Really, there isn't much you need to do here. I mean, they're never going to have it on their heads. But in case I ever want to have it as a hat for some reason, I'm just going to position it so it's on the head. Beautiful. Okay. Now this is the big one. This is how it's going to look in game. I'm going to bring this down. Something like that there. And that is flawless. Okay. There is not much more I need to do with that. We're going to look in the frame. Oi. He looked very uncomfortable there. Okay, that's good. GUI, let's reset all of those. This is back off of an old save I had. And let's position this just so he looks not so flat. All right, I really like the looks of that there. Perfect. Now we're going to save that and let's apply this to a specific item in game, but we're going to give it a different custom model data so that way it doesn't interfere with any of the actual in game items. How we do that is based off of its file path. So right now I have that saved in props, Steve, Steve. So we're just going to copy Steve just because it's easier. Actually, I'm going to lose that in a second anyways, doesn't matter. But I have to go to an item that I want to retexture to look like this. Most of my props are iron hose. So if I actually open up iron hoe, you'll see all these props here. I'm just going to copy one line. And I'm going to change this custom model data to be 68. And this is going to be props Steve Steve. That's it. Now that model will be in game as an iron hoe with custom model data 68. Let's add the resource pack to the server and let's head back to the game. All right, guys, we are back on the server. I have applied the resource pack. Now, if I do slash give love cubs we're gonna do an iron hoe with custom model data 68 and there it is there is our model looking fantastic does sink into the ground a little bit but you know that's fine but i, ha I had a bit of a brain fart right you're running around you're collecting all of these steves and something happens they don't stack. So I went back to the resource pack and just quickly did the exact same thing for lime dye. So for our map, we are gonna use lime dye so that way I can have a stack of 64. I mean, it should be easier for everybody to get 25,000 of them. So I'm gonna put that down there. And all right, now I need to implement the actual system. So I've got a quick key setup here so this would be easy for me let's go x2 and now here are the commands you need to set this up set up your commands what you need to do first is of course set up your objective so we're actually going to call our objective sub count because you guys are collecting subs right so obviously you need to count up to 25,000 subscribers so this is going to be your sub count so what we need to do is activate that and create our objective then we need to set our display, right? So we've got scoreboard objectives, set display, sidebar, and this is gonna be sub count. Now that's gonna set up a display over here for sub counts, and then it's gonna set up, this one it really isn't needed because anybody who collects points will get it anyways, but I just wanna make sure I see myself have a zero on the screen over here. So, so scoreboard player set at all sub count, zero. All right, so that is all you would need to do for your own maps to play. But because I run a server and I'm trying to set this up on a server, I don't want to have a display over here all the time, right? That's just kind of pointless, kind of dumb. So I'm going to have to come up with, oh, hi, iCode. 
I'm about to come up with maybe a system where there's a sign over here, and if you're standing near the sign, it'll tell you, hello, it'll tell you the score? Maybe? I don't know. Okay, I don't know what he's up to. I'll talk to iCode, and then yeah, I'm going to figure out a new scoreboard system. All right, shout out to Mr. iCode Dreams. He was able to help out. He got the sub counter to work on the server. I don't even know if this is legit. It might be legit. I'm on a countdown. Uh, so when I set my scoreboard, slash scoreboard players set love cubs sub counter. Let's so five. It updates down here. Beautiful. Okay. So now what we need to do is come over to these command blocks under Krizzy. And what we're doing is we're adding a scoreboard of 10. Actually, let's go right back to the beginning. Execute if entity within a distance of four has the NBT data in their inventory of a lime die with the custom model data three. We are going to run a scoreboard for the players and we're going to add to the same entity within four player or four blocks of that command block. We're going to add 10 to the sub counter. I really hope that makes sense. Pause the video, look at the command and type it out if you guys want to do this yourself. Do remember this is 1.15.2, but then what we need to do is clear one of those items from them. So we're going to clear that same entity within a distance of four, Minecraft, Lime Die, Custom Model Data, one. And you know what? This could cause problems because if I come in from this direction, I'm going to be closer to that one by one block. So when I get to here, it's going to clear them, but I'm not going to get the points. So what I need to do is add a location to this. So I'm just going to go slash set block and just copy that. Now I'm going to open up this here and we're going to do X equals minus three to 11, Y equals four, Z equals minus four nineteen. We're going to add that to all of our selector arguments here. So let's go back this way. Just to play it safe, I'm going to go right there, add it to that one, and then I'm going to come over here and add it to this one as well. Now, here is the moment of truth. Can I slash give myself give love cubs lime die with the custom model data three? Let's give 10 of them. That in theory should add 100 points. Go. Yes! Sub counter, 105. It works, guys. All right, our scoreboards are set. Now, the only thing that we really need for this area is a winning system and the spawning system. All right, so the spawning system is super easy. Ready for this? All I'm going to do is run this command. Summon Minecraft armor stand at my location that has invulnerable, it is a marker, it is invisible, and it has persistence required, but the biggest point here, it is has the tag random item. All right, what you do now is you just go around and you spawn a bunch of these in. Make sure they're in areas that make sense to have them. So like over here, yes, beautiful. We'll go into the trees a little bit. Ooh, this is a nice little wooded area here. I'll put a bunch in here, perfect. We're gonna come over here and I'll just go around here and add in a bunch of these. I don't wanna go over 50 because that will definitely cause, I mean, it, it probably wouldn't cause a lot of lag, but I don't wanna cause many entities on the server unnecessarily. In my normal maps, I probably have 150 armor stands doing these things and it doesn't cause that many problems. So yeah, I'm just gonna go around, spawn a bunch of these in and hopefully, I guess the server does restart. All right. And just like that, if I fly around in spectator, you can see armor stands all around this map. All right. I think I did about 60 different armor stands. So that's not bad at all. Now we need to work on the actual spawning system and that's super easy. Okay. I'm just going to come outside the map here and I'm going to get myself a hopper and we're just going to come into each other like that. Actually, you know what? Let's get technical. All right. I'm going to create myself another scoreboard objective. And we're going to do slash scoreboard objectives add and let's call this one timer one in case we ever want timers in the future 
and we'll do dummy. Now we're just going to go slash scoreboard players add, uh, let's call it ticks timer one, one. Basically what this is doing now is going to count up. You'll see five, 41, 66. It's going to count up. So every 20 ticks is one second. So I'm going to bring another command block here. And what we're going to do is, so what we're going to do is you're going to execute if score ticks timer one matches 400. And then we're going to run the scoreboard objective once again, and we're going to reset ticks timer one. So over here it says 299, 331, 350, and there we go. Resets back to one. That's perfect because I can take an output off of this as a conditional chain output and summon in items based off of this time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna execute at entity type is equal to armor. Oh, hold on. I, I always mess this up in 1.15. So we're gonna do at, at entity type is equal to armor stand. Now we have to do a sort is equal to random and a limit of, I don't know, why don't we say six? At six different armor stands, we're gonna summon this item in. So summon, so we're gonna summon a Minecraft item with the age of 5,000. Now that's important because I don't want a thousand items to build up and cause intense lag. So when the age of an item reaches 6,000 ticks, it will despawn. So I have it set for 5,000. So after about 50 seconds, because 50 times 20 is 1,000, so 1,000 ticks later, it will despawn. So after that, I have to declare what kind of item I'm summoning. So I'm summoning a lime die, only one, with the tag, or with a display name of subscribers in the color gold. Bold is true, italic is false. Custom model data, three. Now that's gonna summon in that particular item. Now if I hit always on, basically what we should see is there it is. There it is. We got items spawning. So there's another one over here. I'm thinking 20 seconds might be a little too short. I might make that like 10 or 15 seconds because after 50 seconds, they despawn. So yeah, that wouldn't actually leave that many items on the floor overall. So yeah, that works. I'm really happy with that system. Okay. Let me just quickly change that to about 10 or 15 seconds. Now that was right here. We're just gonna half that 200. There we go. So after 10 seconds, it'll summon in some new ones. And then after 50 seconds, these ones will despawn. You pick up your item. It says subscribers. You bring it over to Krizzy over here and he adds it to your score. That is awesome. Okay, so now I wanna create a loot chest. How do I create that loot chest? I'm just gonna do the simplest of things. I'm gonna come over here and I am going to create a few of these so let's do let's do four different kinds okay now i need to go grab myself some of those items here we go here's one oh i think i was standing too close to krizik um right there okay i got it now inside this chest let's say oh you got a loot of all of these subscribers good for you this guy over here is like, well, I got 64. This one here is like, oh, that's fantastic. I got two stacks of 64. And then this guy's like, sorry, I, I don't have that many. I've only got five. Is that, is that, is that too little? Okay, fine, fine. Five stacks. Are you happy? Are you happy? There we go. Five stacks. That actually might be a little too much. Let's go four stacks. Okay. So you have a chance of getting all these different amounts of loots. Now, how do I get that chest over there? Well, what we're gonna do is just create ourselves three armor stands. So let's go just grab some armor stands. One, two, three, four. And I'm just gonna give them all a tag. Let's go for, so what I'm gonna do is just create a tag on all of those armor stands. I'm gonna create random stand. So after, let's create another one of these systems. And I'm going to give ticks, I don't know, let's go for ticks two. Sure. Basically what it's doing now is it's adding a score to ticks two that's counting up. I need to create a reset system for this now. 
So let's make this happen every two minutes, should we say? Two minutes works, right? So every two minutes would be 2,400. And we are gonna reset ticks to timer one. So now when this thing reaches to 2,400, we're gonna get an output from this. Now that's perfect because I can execute at a random armor stand, a clone command. So I can clone this chest to that one over there. So I'll just quickly set that up just like this. Execute at entity tag is equal to random stand. Limit equals one, sort is equal to random. We're gonna run a clone command relative to that armor stand and now that's negative one block away in the X direction. So if you open up your F3 screen here, we look at this block here, I move one and you'll notice this number right here looking at block, X is 342, it gets smaller by one. And now it looks like it gets bigger, but that's a negative number, you gotta keep that in mind. So at this armor stand, we're gonna clone negative one block over to that location. So I mean, in theory, this should already do it. So if I head over here, there it is, we got a random one. Now just for fun, I'm gonna make this reset every, I don't know, why don't we do it every like 10 seconds, okay? So let's do, uh, actually let's do five seconds. So 100, let's head back over here. That's one, now in five seconds this should reset. Kick me out of the chest. Boom, we got another one, completely random. In another five seconds, we're gonna wait, kick me out of the chest, now we got a solo. That is gonna be our loot system. Now I need to create a system, or not really a system, but just a message that pops up when that happens. And that is as simple as doing a tell raw command. So we're doing tell raw at all distances equal to anything within 300 blocks. Now I'm doing that just because I don't know how it works on this server. If I did tell raw at all, it might broadcast across all of the different worlds. So we're just gonna limit it to this world. Now we're doing a text, loot chest has been restocked and it's gonna be in the color of gold. So we should, see, there it is right there. Loot chest has been restocked. And then again, loot chest has been restocked. Five seconds later, loot chest has been restocked. So that is perfect. So now I can set this back to 2400 ticks. And we've now got our score system. We've got our loot system. I don't know why we have a random item there. I gotta look into that. So I forgot one of the biggest commands for the item spawning. It was to target the armor stand with a tag, okay? So you have to make sure that you're only targeting those specific armor stands. I'm super sorry, I can't believe I forgot that. But yeah, so we're targeting armor stands that have the tag random item only. So now it shouldn't target these ones anymore. So we've got the item spawning system, we got the scoreboard, we got the item collection, we got the loot chest. All that's left to do is the winning system. And that's gonna be super easy because all I need to do is test for a score of 25,000 and they won. They'll get a scoreboard or they'll get like a tag applied to their body and they'll be able to redeem their, I lost it, 25K special hat in the survival lobby. Luchas has been restocked, yes. What do we got? Oh, how many is that anyways? If I head over to Krizzy. <laughs> okay, that's 1,000. So it might take a little bit of time to collect 25,000, but I feel like this could be a lot of fun. I might up the amount of items that actually summon in. That would be just through here where I limit how many armor stands get an item spawned at them. I'll probably change that limit to 10 just to make it a little bit more common to get the items spawning in. But yeah, all right, this is good. I really like 1.15 too because the items actually float in the water so you can see them a bit better. Okay, let's do the winning system. And that can be done by simply doing this. So what we're doing is we're executing as all the players that have the sub counter score of a minimum 25,000 that's what these dot dots are. So minimum comes before them, maximum comes after. Then we have distance is equal to 300. That's once again, just because I want to limit it to this world only. We're going to run 
tag at that s so at s means it's executing at the entity you were targeting originally we're going to add the tag winner 25k that's just so i can use that tag in the survival spawn and give them the hat then we're going to say a title for that same argument right here and we're just going to set the times for that title this is basically your fade in time this is your fade out time and this is how long the title gets displayed for again this is done in ticks so this is one second this is one second and this is five seconds then i am looking here we're actually defining the subtitle so we're saying claim your hat in survival spawn for the subtitle and that's done with this command. We're gonna make that dark green. Then of course, I'm gonna do the actual title, same arguments, but we're doing title, winner, and color gold. And then finally, you're gonna get your score reset back to zero. Now here's the test, slash tag love cubs list. Right now I only have one tag, that's op. So if I do slash scoreboard players, set love cubs so i just set my score to 24,990 let's go pick up one of these items okay i don't need i don't need all that many so i got one item now if i walk over to krizik it should happen winner claim your hat in the survival lobby it set my score back to zero and if i do lists I now have winner 25k. Guys, that is how you make a Minecraft map. We've got the item spawning system. We have got the scoreboard system. Sorry, I, I pointed out the wrong thing. We've got the loot board loot system. We've got the scoreboard system. Yours again will be over here on the right hand side because you're using set display. And then we've got the item collection system from Krizzy. And we've got the winning system right here. That's right, that's beautiful. Again, this would just be one room in one of my maps, but I think it turned out really, really well. I'm gonna clean up a little bit here, make it look a little bit prettier, and I'll get the winning system set up in the lobby between now and video release. And once again, guys, thank you so much for 25,000 subscribers. It means the absolute world to me. You guys are the best, all right? And thank you so much for watching the videos. Views are skyrocketing. Likes, you guys are interacting. There's like, I'm getting hundreds of comments on the videos. I'm gonna keep trying to respond to as many comments as I possibly can. But that is all I have time for in today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to come check out the server, the URL is play.lovecubsgaming.com. It will be down in the description. But guys, most importantly, do not forget to have a lovely day. Bye, guys.